Hi friends, welcome. CF Kevin writes in a recent comment, how's the 70 to 200 millimeter F4 for the streets and landscape compared to the F2.8 version? So much doubt about this, ha ha ha. CF Kevin, doubt no more. My most recent video was talking about how the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter F4, this guy, performs as a street photography lens. Today I want to give a hands-on comparison between the F4 and the f2.8 version of this lens. One thing I want to mention is um, I have tried with all my might, but I cannot get this lens color off of this rented lens. I would like for it to have come off because it's kind of in the way for my handheld shooting style, but the good thing is that it's not really um, heavy. It's not adding that much weight to the lens. So it didn't really um, mess up my interpretation of the weight of the lens that much. So I've gone on plenty of photo walks with the f4, but of course I'm going to go on a photo walk with the f2.8 and see how it do. And how it do is a very important metric to understand how it in fact do. So now that I live in South Florida, I have the option of going to a beach with a pier for a photo walk anytime I like. And that's exactly what I did for this photo walk. I've been quite enjoying that setting lately, uh, especially in the evening time. So with that said, first off, let's step through this photo walk and then we can talk about the findings. Very quickly, I wanted to mention that I shot with the f2.8 at f2.8 the entire time. So I arrived at the beach and started grabbing photos. I grabbed this shot immediately. I thought it was quite nice. I enjoyed the contrast between the orange shirt and the blue ocean and you know generally blue background. And also the pants match the ocean. Then I zoomed in through a pier onto a cruise ship. You can see that the cruise ship is in focus and then the pier is nicely out of focus. And with the F4, the pier would have been more in focus. I really like the way the image breaks itself apart because of this and the pier um, nothing on the pier is, is too distracting. Now, while I was walking, I had, I think, two different people mention that there was a bird on the beach eating another bird. Whoa! So we have a cannibalistic bird situation. I think they saw this lens and thought, oh, he'd probably like to take a photo of that. So I went and took some photos of a cannibal bird. Here we have a horrible situation unfolding. We have the bird in the foreground and then we have a nicely out of focus ocean in the background. I really love the way this looks. Then very quickly I came across a person with boxing gloves who was training with his coach and I thought I gotta go over there and talk to them so that I can spend some time hovering around them taking photos and I can you know get up close if I want to. Hey, excuse me, can I take some photos of you guys? I'm a photographer. All right, I just share them on Instagram. Yeah, that works. And what I learned is that this person is actually a professional MMA fighter. His name is Jason Jackson, and he was very friendly, as well as his coach, and they obliged me. So hover I did, grab some wider shots, grab some tighter shots, and it was a very pleasant interaction. How long have you been doing it? Uh, be coming on to my 10th year. How about 10, 10, 10 years? years. Yeah. All right, wow. I got a lot of respect for you guys getting punched in the face. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good skill to have though, for sure. I'm gonna put my card right here, guys. You guys have a blessed day. Thank you. All right, thank you, bro. God bless All right. You. yeah, see ya. Then I noticed some competition on the beach. I thought to myself, look at this moron walking around with a big white lens on his camera like he owns the place. Then I grabbed a shot of my lovely wife, looking lovely and she was having a nice experience on the beach listening to something. I'm sure it was probably hardcore music. It's not music, it's just not Hey now. Grabbed another shot of the cannibal hawk. Look at that nicely out of focus background. And then I decided now's the time to move on to the pier. We are moving later into the evening at this point. Low light is quickly approaching. Grabbed a few shots of a couple sitting on the beach and one of the things to take note of in this image is the background is just slightly out of focus on the other side of that first set of palm trees and the power lines. It, I, love, I love the way that it affects the image. It creates a, a three-dimensional feel to things. Then I grabbed a couple of photos of this guy. I believe this would be considered kite surfing, but I'm not entirely sure. I know I have plenty of kite surfing experts in the audience here, so uh, please feel free to correct me. I like the way that this one turned out. I think the positioning is quite nice. I was having a lot of trouble keeping the kite separated 
from him. So sometimes he'd just be completely behind it. Sometimes it would be overlapping him a little bit. So I was working on getting the timing just right for that. Then I grabbed a couple of shots of this orangish light reflecting on the ocean and then the light pole from which the light is being emitted as well and the clouds in the background. Get ready folks because the rest of this video is going to be an hour and a half of me taking light pole shots. <laughs> better buckle yourself up. Then I grabbed another shot of a light pole. Then I grabbed another shot of a light pole. Then I grabbed another shot of a light pole. Then I grabbed another shot of a light pole. Then I grabbed another shot of a light pole. Then I grabbed another shot of a light pole. Then I decided I would aim my lens over towards a port where there are uh, cranes, I guess is what you would call them. And they put containers and things onto ships. Lots of lights that direction. I aimed that direction and pushed the lens way out of focus and played around with some bokeh. So we have this one where I'm filling up the entire frame with it. And then we have a few others where it's, it's just right in the middle. It's like a, a streak across the middle with different colors on top and bottom. And then what did I tell you? More light poles. We have this guy standing next to a light pole. And then we have this guy standing next to a light pole. I really love how this one turned out. Love the light on his face, his positioning, the fact that he's the only person in the frame. I love the zigzag quality of the fencing starting close to us and moving into the distance. And then we have a rather cranked photo of I think the same couple sitting on the beach. Then I grabbed another shot of a light. What are the pros? First I'll say both lenses are rather sharp lenses. I, I'm, I'm sure you could, you know, put the images side by side and see a discernible difference, but they're they're both plenty sharp for almost anybody's purposes. Also low light, I definitely felt more confident shooting with the f2.8 in low light versus the f4, but I would feel far more confident with a prime lens with a 1.8 aperture than I do with this lens with, with a 2.8 aperture. So what are the cons of using the f2.8? It's a pretty big lens. I, I feel good about my decision to go with the f4, which is a much more manageable lens. And I also felt rather visible at all times. Okay, what are the alternatives to this lens? Is there a lens that will give you an f2.8 aperture with the size of the f4 version? In fact, there is. I introduced to you the Tamron 70 to 200 minus 20 f2.8. This lens was introduced to me by Marcel Kohler on my previous video about the f4. Thank you, Marcel. The interesting thing about the Tamron is that it is a fair bit smaller than this guy while still giving you a consistent f2.8 aperture. Exciting stuff. What are the pros? Well, I don't have the lens, so I'm going to be speculative off of internet research. One thing is it apparently has great autofocus, seems to produce great image quality, and also that lens is about half the weight of this lens, which will give you a good idea of what you're going to be dealing with when you're out shooting. What are the cons? Both of these guys have built-in optical image stabilization. And when you pair that with the optical image stabilization inside the um, Sony, F, oh, that one, you get a really fantastic result. And if you're shooting video, it makes a huge difference. The Tamron has no in-lens optical image stabilization. Another thing is that it uh, it seems to have a lower build quality from what I gathered than than this. This thing's a tank. You could you could beat somebody in the head with it. I mean, you could beat somebody in the head with the Tamron too, but they would just be like, ah. With this, they'd be like. Another quick thing to take note of, and something that this guy mentioned, is that the uh, lens has an external zoom, whereas all the components are internal here. When I zoom this guy in and out, nothing moves, uh, at least that you can see. And he said that you do run the risk of getting some dust in there. That's a difference. That's something for you to decide. But if we look at the prices, we have $1,900 for the Sony versus $1,200 for the Tamron. Uh, that's very seductive for the Tamron. In conclusion, many photographers, me included, are willing to go out with a larger lens if it helps us achieve the images that we are after. But there is also a lot of value to going out with a small setup that allows you to be nimble and inconspicuous. I will say, if you want to stir up intrigue and start conversations with strangers while you're walking around, this is a great way to do it. People are going to look at this giant white lens and think, what's that person up to? And they're gonna recommend, they're probably gonna recommend all sorts of locations to you. And you know, and it's probably gonna have to do with bird watching or or nature or something. But 
um, you can get into interesting conversations that way. But when I ran into that MMA fighter, he was very intrigued by what I was up to. And I think it's very probable that this lens played a role in that. So who knows, you might get some, some business. For me, the trade-off of having a lens with only an f4 aperture versus an f2.8 aperture is absolutely worth it considering this lens is far more manageable to shoot with. Uh, I When I bought this lens, that was my thought process and I still, I still, still feel good about that. Okay, that is it for this one. I wanted to mention that I have been hard at work on a preset collection for you guys. That is on the way. I have really enjoyed using these presets on my own photos and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Also, I have been obsessed with this app called Clubhouse. Maybe you've heard of it. If you don't know, it is a place where you can have audio-based conversations with other people of various types. and. I've been finding myself in all sorts of wonderful conversations, mostly with creatives. I've been enjoying it thoroughly. It's currently invite only, and it, so if you're not on there yet, you either have to find a friend who can invite you. I also have five invites, which I have not used yet, so if you, if you really want one, you want to be invited, um, if you want to very quickly message me on Instagram or Twitter, I'd be happy to help you out but you can find me there at James the Red. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at James the Red. Please feel free to engage with me on any of those places. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. If you want to hit the like button or if you want to subscribe, that would mean a lot. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Goodbye.